Hey guys, Adam with Clifton Door here with the E2E team here in uh, Madison to show us a quick tip and trick in regards to taking some natural fiber that you made using it to construct a cord for your bow drill. So Madison, take it away. In this case, what I wanted to share with you is, you know, when you're in the field, you're not, you don't always have, you know, the best of every world, especially if you're in a real, what you call, and, and I don't like to refer to myself as a survival instructor. I'm really not. I'm a wilderness field craft instructor. That's what I teach. And I, I go at it at that point of view. Now, within the skills that I teach, out of a survival situation, you could use many of the skills. But I don't come to you from the point of view of survival. I don't like to think in ter terms of survival because I, it, it's, a, it's a connotation of desperateness. And I don't want any of my students that have ever come to me to be in the field and feel desperate. I don't want them to, if they're in what you call, you know, quote unquote, survival situation, it sounds like you're in a desperate situation. I really don't want any of my students to be we, in that situation. We don't want to survive in the woods. We yeah. want to thrive in the we woods. We want to thrive. You know, you think about the North American Indians. Were they surviving? No. Their refrigerator was right out there, TP tent door. And, you know, those, those things like that are things we've got to consider. And so let's, let's, uh, let's have fun with this thing and, and don't think of uh, living off the land as survival, but think about it as something that's a lot of fun, a great challenge, and super rewarding. Okay, today I want to share with you how to make and attach a natural fiber. This is in lieu of 550 cord or uh, synthetic fiber to a bow to make a bow and drill kit for a friction fire. In this case, we're using tulip tulip poplar, of which I'm up here. We, we have a little tulip poplar in northwest Florida, but here, huh, these guys are absolutely inundated with tulip poplar. So this is the go-to plant fiber here in North Carolina. So anyway, uh, not only is this uh, tulip popper great for plant fiber, it's also great for your friction fire kits, whether it be hand drill, bow drill, uh, fire saw, or whatever technique you're using. In this case, I'm going to show you how to attach a natural fiber to a bow for a friction fire without uh, without uh, synthetic fiber. Okay, the first thing you want to do is get a bow. I guess that's what two feet long. You got a nice belly in it. It's got a natural curve in it. This is a green stick. It's thick enough to where it's not going to flex a lot, so I don't want to flex. So what I want to do is take right here in the start, if I can get this split off, okay. See what I've done here? I've got it split. See, I'm right down in the middle. I'll split it just a little bit. I don't want to go too deep, but I want to go deep enough to where I'm starting. Now I want to go to the other side and get dead in the center. Take the point of my knife, and now you can do this with a big machete too. It's probably hot. Bring. House. Go. Okay. Uh, now I just slightly go. Slightly kink my knife just a little bit, just enough to open that twist. So now I've got a, a two foot a belly stick. Uh, which would be my bow, and I've got to split it both ends. I'm going to put my knife up. Now, I simply take my plant fiber that I've already got processed, and I want to just take this, just like I showed you uh, on the previous video here, we were showing you how to make a loop for a snare. What I'll do on this is I'll take my knife, I'll stick it down in the lower end, and I'll take this, stick it right here, and I'll twist it just a little bit yeah do me a favor and just take that knife and open it up for me just a little bit okay if the camera's seeing this I'm just getting this down there okay let pull the knife out okay now all I've done is slip slip the end of the fiber through the end of the stick now I want to pull that through a little bit it's probably not quite enough okay now I want to come around one turn and when I go back through, let me see my knife there, Bobby. When I come back through, and I'm going to take the back of my knife and mash that down and then pull this tight. You see, now I've got it looped and pretty tight. Okay, I'll take this right here. I'm going to part 
Actually, I guess this will work. So I now have this attached here. I'm going to take this like so. Pinch it. i got about a six inch running end here. And I'm going to go over the top and under the bottom. Figure eight over the top. Under the bottom. Now one thing that we should add on to this medicine is, as you guys can see, this is going to be a hefty core because if we spend all this time and energy, we got to get a fire going. We don't want a chance of it breaking on us. That's right. It does need to be fairly stout. Now if you got good plant fiber, now down home in northwest Florida, I teach this technique with uh, uh, yucca. Go. And the yucca I have down in northwest Florida, oh my god, it's stuff, it's tensile strength, I'd stack it against just about anything. Uh, I'm not sure what it would stack up against this, but I would bet that that the yucca is stronger than this poplar. I, I, I would bet it is. Now I've heard that the, uh, the dog bane is is really high in tensile strength, but I would honestly I'd stick stack the uh, yucca up against dog bane. Now I, I'm, I'm not a betting man. I don't gamble, but based on my experience, I'd say the yucca is at least as strong as dog bane, if not stronger. But I can't sit here and say it is or isn't. I don't want to do that because there might be somebody that knows more about it than I do could prove me wrong. Okay, so now what we have looks like a flag, a flag, okay? Now, the biggest mistake most people make is, is they do. Now, what we have here is Adam's over here making a really nice piece of cordage. And most people would think, okay, this is what I want to use for my bowstring. Yes, sir. Well, the truth is, because you have texture on this core here, that's going to abrade in friction against your spindle, and it's going to pop just like that. So that's the thing you want to get away from. And the key to this technique is just simply getting this behind you like this, put this in your leg, and twist. See my hand? Now see this hand? Watch this hand. I twist here, twist here, and then I want to straighten that out so it doesn't get tangled. So I'm, I'm twisting everything in one direction. There's no double twist. Because see, in this case, you got two twists going one way and the other twist going the opposite direction. Working against each other. Right. And that's what makes the cord. But now this is stronger in its, its position because you got two pieces coming together, twisted mm -hmm. together. Whereas in this case, we've just got a single piece. But because of the texture of the shaft of the length of this natural fiber is smoother than that. That's what we want. So this is the technique you want to use. Come out here, twist, see what I'm doing? Everybody watch me. Give me all the way back, far back as I need to go. Okay, Bobby, I need you again. Stick it in there. Let me get this. In there. Okay, pull your knife out, pull it snug, not too tight, but snug, and then I come back right. That is? Oh yeah, that's just tight. Just it, it, it's, not, it's not excessively tight, but it's tight enough, but see what you're going to have to do is bend that bow a little bit when you make your loop. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is, you don't want to put so much pressure on this that you wear this out quick. Exactly. Is that, right? is that what you're doing? Exactly. And now I'm going to come back around and I'm going to drop this back down inside. I was just saying that this stuff does tear and abrade a little easier. Never made friction fire with this type of natural fiber. I have made friction fire many times with uh, yucca, the natural fiber yucca, and I've made it with dog bane, I've made it with stinging nettle, but I've never made it with poplar. How, is, how did stinging nettle hold it? Oh yeah, stinging nettle is, is awesome. Right up there with yucca. The, the, the really, the three best in North America will be yucca, stinging nettle, and dog bait. Those three are the top three strength, now, the tensile strength. Can you, can you explain to people a little bit about what dog bane is? Well, dog bane is just a, a, basically a weed. It's like a bush. Yeah, it's right. a bush. And it has a shaft on it, very pithy kind of a shaft. Right. But when it dries out, it's an annual. It dies in the winter and comes back in the summer. And it has a little strip, a very thin layer, like this, along its shaft of it. And when you break it, you, you can typically get it, and when you break it, the little stuff fingers out, and then you strip it off. Right. And so each time you break it, it has another piece that comes off of you. Just strip that off and keep 
ribbon-like pieces coming off, you know, as long as the shaft of the dog mane itself. But it does grow real bushy. Now, I don't even have it down there where I live. Right. But I'd love to, I wish I did, but I'm I'm thankful. I've got the yucca, and man, I, I have done a, a lot of stuff with yucca. And yucca is my go-to, but it's, you know, it's not the only go-to. Depends on where you are in North America. But uh, in my case, it's yucca. Uh, for you guys up here, it's obviously tulip poplar. And I think for you, uh, maybe up there, you probably dog bane or stinging yeah, nettle we, or something like that. We have dog bane, stinging nettle. I've also made cordage out of uh, uh, cedar. Yeah. Red and white cedar okay. is not as good. But... Yeah. It, now, can I, uh, can I yeah, ask you a question? A lot do. of people think that uh, you can actually take cattail leaves and make cordage out of it. What is your take on that? Okay. I know what mine is. The answer to that question is, yes, you can make cordage, but how much uh, integrity will that cordage have? Exactly. Little or none. Little or none. Little or none. It, it will make cordage, but you're not going to be able to do a whole lot with it. Right. I mean, it would be fine for maybe, I don't know what exactly, but you wouldn't want to make it for a trap or a snare or something that you really needed the integrity. Now, see where I'm at here? Uh, friends, you that are watching out there, I'm doing the same thing on this bottom, top side as I was on the bottom side. I'm just doing my figure eight wrap. I'm going to come back around. I'm going to make my overhand square knot. I always like to tie square knots. Square knots, by the way, is simply right over left, left over right. Just, if you'll remember that little simple, you'll get a square knot, and they're better than grannies all day long. Okay, so it's, if you go left over right on the first turn, go right over left the, first, the next time. So either way you go, it's right over left, left over right, and then you got yourself a good square knot. And square knots are always better than grannies. Okay, now what we have here is a string that I believe, and in fact I'm confident, that I could attach a spindle to this, put it on my fireboard, and make myself a friction fire within a few minutes. Right. No problem. Absolutely. And and. You know, this is in lieu of 550. I mean, obviously, you're going to use 550 if you've got it. Everybody's learned, most people that learn bow and drill are loom with 550 cord. Uh, and that's why, mm -hmm. by using what nature provides for you. Mm -hmm. And with just a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of pre-thought, and some experience and instruction, hey, you, you can do this stuff, guys. I mean, this is all doable stuff. Yep. And I, I'd stack uh, no no problem on making friction fire with this. It's going to work. Absolutely. Now, I'm not going to be able to make friction fire a dozen times with this but one time's all i need exactly. you know one time's all and I how need. long did it take you to make it while you're explaining it? oh yeah Probably no time at all yeah if i wasn't sitting here you know teaching this technique i could have probably done it half the time but i'd like to share the knowledge with you guys i hope you've enjoyed this uh, little segment uh how to make a natural fiber bowstring when you don't have 550 cord or some other synthetic fibers and, you know, don't get me wrong, I love 550 cord. I'm, a, I'm an old Navy SEAL myself, and, you know, without 550 cord, we couldn't mount operations. It, it was this absolute necessity on everything we've ever done, and still is to this day. So I love, a, I am a 550 cord guy. I love the stuff. I make all kinds of stuff from it uh, all the time, but uh, sometimes you just find yourself without it, and this is a good uh, alternative. Absolutely. And this will make yourself uh, a friction fire when you don't have anything else. And if you don't practice it, yeah. it's like anything else. Try this at home, guys. If you have any problems with these uh, and any other questions that we have that we uh, like to share with you, please give us a call. Give us a shout. We're easy to find. It's www.equipptoendure.com. You can find us all on the web, uh, YouTube. We're always available for your questions. We'd love to answer you. We'd love to help you. We'd love to have you come and you know, take some of our courses that we're offering today. They'd also check out the Facebook page, facebook.com slash equipped to endure. We're also on Twitter. Ace, go away. Ace is stealing my rope. <laughs> and of course, everything from wilderness survival to primitive skills to canine training, we really cover a plethora of different topics, very multifaceted in regards to that. So check out the website again. If you guys have any questions for Madison, you can reach him at Madison Equipped Indoor. Bobby at Equipped Indoor, Joe at Equipped Indoor, and then Chance. Hey guys, I'm Adam from Equipped Indoor. If you guys have any questions or comments, please email us. You guys take care. Be safe out there. Remember, if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared.